To understand electricity, we need to think in atomic terms. In an atom, each electron has a charge of minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Atoms are not charged particles, so for each electron, there is a proton with a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. If an atom gains or loses an electron, it becomes charged and is called an ion. An electric current is the flow of charged particles through a material. The majority charge carriers in metals are electrons, as they are delocalized and free to move. Convention states that current flows from a positive terminal to a negative one. What actually happens, however, is that the negative electrons flow towards the positive terminal in a circuit. Current is measured in amperes. The unit of charge, the coulomb, is defined as the charge passing a point in a circuit per second when the current is one ampere. Current can therefore be said to be the rate of flow of charge. One ampere flows when one coulomb of charge passes a given point in a circuit each second. Electrical circuits are used to transfer energy from one place to another. EMF stands for electromotive force, but it is not a force. It is a ratio of energy to charge measured in volts. The potential difference, or PD, across the terminals of a power supply when no current is flowing is known as the EMF, and it tells us the total energy per coulomb of charge that the power supply delivers to a circuit. Although a power supply primarily delivers energy to a circuit, it must be realized that the flow of electrons through the power supply is actually opposed by the wires or chemicals within it. The resistance inside a source of EMF is called internal resistance. For an efficient energy transfer from a source of EMF to an external resistor, the internal resistance should be small in comparison to the external resistance. The EMF of a power supply equals the potential difference of the circuit. Not all of the energy taken from the supply is delivered to the external circuit. Some is used to overcome the internal resistance of the supply. This energy is represented by what are known as lost volts, and the effect is shown in this hill diagram, where R is the internal resistance. Potential difference, or PD, is a complementary concept to EMF. We can define potential difference as the work done in moving unit charge between two points in a circuit. It is a measure of the energy transferred during charge movement. Resistance is the name given to the ratio between the potential difference across and the current flowing through a piece of material. Resistance is measured in ohms. A material has a resistance of 1 ohm if there is a current of 1 amp flowing through it when the potential difference across it is 1 volt. The resistance of a material can be said to be the degree to which it opposes the flow of charged particles through it. At a constant temperature, this depends on three factors. The resistivity of the material, the length of the material, and the cross-sectional area of the material. Ohm discovered that the resistance of a piece of material is proportional to its length and inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. Power is the work done per second. It is measured in watts. 
Electrical power is the energy liberated in a device each second. The power dissipated as a current flows through a wire can therefore be stated as P equals I squared R. When there is resistance in a piece of material, the power dissipated is lost as heat. In a metal, resistance and temperature both increase as current is increased. This is because the more electrons there are flowing through a material, the more chance there is that one of the electrons will collide with an atom in the material and surrender its energy. This energy causes the atoms in the material to vibrate, further increasing the chance of collision and opposing the flow of current. The resistance therefore increases with temperature. The resistance of negative temperature coefficient thermistors decreases as the temperature increases. NTC thermistors are made of a semiconducting material. The extra energy of the material at higher temperatures gives some of the electrons on the outer shells of the atoms the required energy to become delocalized. They then form part of the current. When the current increases, the ratio VI decreases so the resistance decreases accordingly. Ohm's law states that the current through a conductor is proportional to the potential difference across it, providing its temperature remains constant. Ohmic conductors obey this law, and their resistance does not vary with current at a constant temperature. Metals are ohmic conductors. The resistance of non-ohmic conductors varies with current, so they do not obey Ohm's law. IV graphs for non-ohmic conductors may be curves or may not pass through the origin. NTC thermistors and semiconductors are examples of non-ohmic conductors. Kirchhoff extended Ohm's law for systems of electrical conductors. Kirchhoff's first law states that the algebraic sum of the currents at a junction is zero. This tells us that charge is neither created or destroyed. There is conservation of charge in a closed circuit. Kirchhoff's second law states that around any closed circuit, the algebraic sum of the EMFs is equal to the algebraic sum of the potential differences. In other words, the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the IR drops in a circuit. Any energy that charge gains as it moves around the circuit is balanced by corresponding losses. There is conservation of energy. The relationship between currents, potential differences, and resistances varies, depending upon whether the circuit has resistors in series or parallel. Resistors in series pass the same amount of current. Resistors in parallel have the same potential difference because each coulomb of charge flowing through delivers the same amount of energy regardless of its route. This becomes clearer if we examine the current in series and parallel circuits. In parallel circuits, there is a high current before the junction, then half the current in each of the branches. Both bulbs receive the total energy carried by each coulomb of charge. 
In series circuits, the current is equal throughout, and the bulbs are each given half the energy carried per coulomb of charge. Potential dividers can be used to vary the output PD of a circuit. They can be used to produce a small PD from a larger one. The larger voltage, V, is connected across two resistors in series. Kirchhoff's second law states that the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the IR drops in a closed circuit. The potential difference across the two resistors therefore equals V. V out is the PD across R2. If R1 is smaller than R2, it has a smaller share of the input EMF. Light-dependent resistors or thermistors can be substituted for one of the resistors. The potential divider can then supply an output PD which is dependent on temperature or light intensity. When light shines on the LDR, or the temperature of an NTC thermistor increases, the resistance decreases. The smaller their PD, the larger the PD across the set resistor R. Potential dividers can also be set up using wire of uniform resistance and a sliding contact. This provides a continuously variable PD and is known as a potentiometer. Potentiometers are often connected to the knobs of television and radio sets, enabling you to vary the picture intensity or volume. Potential dividers incorporating NTC thermistors are used in fire alarms and are also useful for maintaining constant temperatures when connected to heaters. They are used in tropical fish tanks and incubators.